You're clearly committed. You're putting in a lot of work. You've armed yourself with a lot of resources here. You're putting in the time. So the question is, what exactly are you doing during those four to five hours a day? Are you doing the right things? Is mm -hmm. the right thing for you attending a class or watching a video or doing a practice test or a timed section or drilling? It can all be valuable. I just want to make sure you're studying as effectively as you possibly can, whether right. you aim for the November LSAT, the January LSAT, or both. So how are you spending those four to five hours? I feel like when I don't understand something, I do try my hardest to like, be like, okay, why did I get this wrong? Why, obviously, why was this answer? Why the answer I get was appealing? Why was it not appealing the other right answer? But I don't think that I'm make, doing it efficiently where I like, I'm truly understanding because I do get frustrated, right? If I can't ask anyone, I'm like, okay, well, this is the right answer. Like, I'm gonna try my hardest to understand why it was the right answer and why the one that I got wrong is wrong. But then like, after a while, I'm like, okay, I just gonna remember this is the right answer. Like for this reason, next one, this is why I got it wrong. I know if that, if I'm able to like um, say that clearly, I feel like it can be confusing, but- No, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, what I'm getting is that you are, you're doing what you can. You're doing, spending a lot of time watching lesson videos and drilling. And you run into roadblocks sometimes when you feel like there's no one to go to, to ask questions, to have, feedback on what you're doing. And so one question I have for you, Rebecca, is are you ever attending any of the live classes inside yeah. the course? Good question. No, I'm always scared to attend those because I feel like I'm going to put on the spot and I wouldn't know like how to answer it effect like efficiently and effectively. I've watched the videos of the online of the classes or like the um, live lessons. I've watched those. I feel like they make me feel safer because obviously I'm not in the Zoom meeting. Um, and those have definitely helped. Um, I know that I really struggle with one, the sufficient assumption, necessary assumptions. For some reason, um, I'm able to like mathematically do it. I don't know if that makes sense. Totally. It does. It does. They can be formulaic. Yeah. So like, if you're like, what's opposite of this or what's a negation or like mistaken negation or reversal, I'm able to do that. Or so I think, but then when it comes to like the problem, like the actual in writing, like paragraph, the stimulus, I, I don't know how to do that. Um, but then I like, I remember I went to, I saw one of the live um, course. Yeah. The live courses. Um, and it was very helpful, but. I yeah. want to encourage you come to class. Come to okay. class. No one's <laughs> gonna try. No one's gonna try and put you on the spot to make you feel dumb or anything. But this is an opportunity for you to ask questions. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. The TAs make mistakes. The instructors make mistakes. It's totally fine. The idea is that you make the mistakes now so that you don't make them on test day. And the LSAT's tough. So imprecisions of language will happen. Mistakes will happen. They're very crafty at making tempting wrong answers and unappealing right answers, but you want to discover what mistakes you're likely to make. Discover them now because they repeat and that way you won't make it on test day. But the videos can be very safe. Drilling where you can check the answer whenever you want can feel very safe, but test day isn't like that. Test day is four sections with only a short break in the middle, and then you don't get to hear back for two to three weeks at least. So right. if you could put yourself in that kind of situation more, then you'll see your practice test scores rise. Because if you're, if you're just taking the occasional practice test and then the other work you're doing is videos and drilling, the videos and drilling don't accurately reflect what your practice tests are going to be like. The way they get better at time settings is to do more time settings. Mm -hmm. And you have access to ask questions in class. Take advantage. Okay. Yeah. And then I think another, now I remember another reason why I like watching the recordings is because after typically, well, so yeah, I'm an, also it's 742. So like my time, it's not Eastern time. Mm -hmm. And so um, by the time that it's like Eastern time or whatever that they happen, they occur, I usually do like my five, four to five hours of prep um, towards like 
the morning side. You study, you study early in the day and relax in the afternoon, you were saying. Right. right. So by the time that those like courses are happening, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going to get burnt out if I go to them. So like, obviously I'm like, okay, I feel safer just like watching them another like time. And then not, obviously it doesn't interfere with like me burning out, but definitely I think I'll try to split up my time. So I'm not able to, um, so I'm able to attend them and not feel like I'm just doing too much in one day. But I was going to add something to what you had said, but it's in my mind already. It's okay if it comes back oh. to you. Oh, you oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember. So yeah. when I, so one thing I have also noticed since the beginning is like when I am doing practice problems and like it, then it tells me the right answer and I get it right. I, my mood changes and I, I get more right answers when I see automatically that I got the answer before it right. And so when I see that I got it wrong, I don't know what happens to me and I just keep getting the next ones wrong. And so I think that's also why for, like you had mentioned, like obviously um, practice tests or even the actual exam, it's not going to be like that where I'm not going to know. And so I, I feel like I don't know what I, have, I should work on like psychologically or like to be able to be like, okay, no, keep my like mood the same, which I, yeah, I don't know why I just, I get, I feel like I get happier. And so like, I just know, okay, this next one, I know I'm going to do well. And my brain's already like, okay. And then I am able to perform better than when I get it wrong. And I see automatically I got it wrong to go into the next answer. Yeah. Well, so what you've got to work on is moving forward while letting go of whatever happened previously whether you feel good about the previous question or you feel terribly about the previous question or you feel uncertain about the previous question, you've got to move forward under uncertainty. And you've got to move forward being able to wash your hands of whatever came before, move on to the next problem, the next game, the next passage with a fresh start, like it's the first one you encountered that day. Because that's what test day is going to be like. There's going to be no feedback at all. The proctor is not going to know. You're not going to know. You're not going to hear back for two to three weeks and you're going to have to live that entire period not knowing at all how you did. Right. And so the ups and downs are something you can experience only under practice conditions where you have the freedom to check the answer. I encourage you, don't check the answer while you're drilling. Don't check the answer during time sections. Never use the show answer feature during a section or an exam because you can't do it on test day. I wish oh. LSAC would let us all remove the show answer button because it gives you that fa that temptation in your face every single time, but test days not going to be like that. So you have to move forward, simulating that as best you can. Yeah, I love the show answer. <laughs> yeah, of course, like, we all do. I quickly like right away. I don't even wait till I'm done. But yeah, I, I know, I know. Everyone does, but you gotta you gotta hold back. You gotta maintain that that self control and that in a way a mindfulness of saying, okay, well, I'm gonna move forward, not knowing, or if I don't feel great about it, I'll be able to move forward anyway saying, hey, although I don't feel great about that, maybe I did well, but I don't know. Regardless, I have to forge ahead. I wanted to circle back on something else you said earlier, Rebecca, re regarding the scheduling your, your right. studying time of day. There are classes almost every single night live. Mm -hmm. You don't have to attend every single one. Maybe if it's on a topic that you don't need to focus on, then you just do your four to five hours on your own in the morning, and then you relax the rest of the day you can always catch the recording later if you want. But let's say, what's, what's the section that you feel that you most need to, to work on? Um, I would say logic, logic reasoning. Okay. So we have logical reasoning classes live Thursday nights. We also have logical reasoning study groups Thursday night as well. So there's a lot going on Thursdays for you. You might want to make Thursday morning pretty light for you. Maybe only spend two hours studying, relax during the day, and then in the afternoon or evening, you attend the classes for that one only. The logic games, the logical, the logic games and reading comp, you skip those classes, catch the recordings only when you need to, but logical reasoning, you make it a point to attend that specifically and make your day light earlier in order to balance it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think that's something that I really have to like schedule out. Just because it happened, it does, it was like in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I'm at the end of the day, I'm already like, okay, it's time to relax. I probably should go to a course, but also I just was afraid um, of like burning out. And I know 
I have definitely work on that. And I've definitely having the whole day right just to study is something that throughout my time I've been like, no, like I deserve this break or especially um, when I do homework, like with friends who are still an undergraduate. Um, the like really the only times they can hang out sometimes is like with by doing homework right and it's on the weekends and I'm like at least for me I've tried since I study like every day I've tried the weekends to be primarily relaxing right like no LSAT prep at least um, for me but then times when they're like okay Saturday and Sunday then I do do LSAT Saturday and Sunday um, and then I only do it for a couple hours but uh, yeah, I don't know if I should be doing outside like seven days a week. I usually do it five days a week. Um, I, I think know. five is fine. It's important to have balance. It's important to take time off. And if you want to do just a tiny bit on the weekend, that's okay. But don't feel obligated to, especially if you decide to extend your timeline to January. This is a lot to be doing every single day. You want to take your appropriate breaks. So, I mean, November is a shorter period. You could do a timed exam per week. And along with detailed review, that could be the bulk of your work. But if you go for January, then you have a longer timeline and you're going to have holidays in between. There's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas and New Year's. And a lot of times people are off from work and doing vacations and family stuff, whatever you have going on. And so you'll have to build those into your schedule and you're studying around that and be okay with the fact that maybe the four, five, four to five hours during that entire period every single day may not be sustainable and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then um, just my last closing question is based on uh, the, okay, so another thing I thought of is because of my second exam score, because it was like a 140, around a 143, or it was a 143. Um, I know I should, if I'm taking the exam in November, just because I also realized that, um, the day to change it was literally like a few days ago. So it's not like I can like drop it. Well, I could, but then I have to pay. Oh, I have the LSAC fee waiver too. I, I don't know if I, I reminded you, I'm not refreshed to remember on that. Um, so I have an LSAC fee waiver. Um, so regardless, I would have to pay, especially since after a couple of day, days ago with the registration deadline, I think it said I have to pay like 125 if I want to like change it starting today. I think it was starting today or yesterday. Um, so do you recommend that I just take November and January or should I just like aim for January? Because another thing that I thought of is like, obviously like I'm not taking multiple practice exams. So I don't know if I should take it November and then it just be like lower than January or if I should just pay the money to be able to move to January um I'm just I, yeah I hear what I hear your question I generally recommend only taking the LSAT officially when you feel like you're likely to achieve your goal and okay. so given where you're at now you're looking for a big score increase of course there's a lot you can do in a month but I don't know if you would achieve a 17 point increase securely from 143 to 160. You could keep taking some more time to practice tests and see if they go up in that direction closer to that goal. If they do, then take November. Otherwise, I would postpone or withdraw and LSAC gets their fees, unfortunately. As a fee waiver recipient, you can still try to ask them Oh, okay. Them on the phone. You can you can try. I'm not saying they're gonna do right, anything. Right. You, yeah. But as a fee waiver recipient, that you might pull on their heartstrings a little bit and see if they're willing to be flexible at all. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, so okay. So do you think I, I don't wanna I'm very a person that wants to be a dreamer, but I also know it's important to be realistic and I want to make sure that I'm not dreaming too much like do you think that it's possible from a 135 to get to a 160 for the january LSAT? for january absolutely there's a okay. lot you can do over okay. the course of the next three months or so okay okay perfect okay, Just made, i mean you're dedicated you're putting in the time yeah i don't want to be overreaching that's why like that's what i mean by dreamer like i don't want to overreach um and just assume like that's possible 
I, I want to be like make sure I'm realistic so I know like my time and stuff like that um okay so I have a lot to think about <laughs> yeah of course but rather than asking is it possible let's see what can we do to get you there and right. so I, I would recommend adding in more timed exams individual timed sections and come into class bring your questions ask in class put yourself in that position where you might make a mistake and be okay with it knowing that it's a safe supportive environment and you have to get those mistakes out of the way now so they don't happen on test day okay perfect well thank you so much for your time my pleasure rebecca of course have a good one reach out anytime if you need anything at all oh uh, thank you so much of bye bye course. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.